when you own a business, your weaknesses come out quickly. Quickly, if you're unorganized, whatever. Whatever you're not good at, it shows right away. And so you really have to work hard to plug the gaps in or the holes in, in, in regards to where you're, where you're weak. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Masters in Fitness Business Podcast, where you get to stand on the shoulders of giants. And today I'm bringing you a giant from right here in St. Louis, the great city of St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, Wayne Hawkins owns Train to Perform Personal Training. And Wayne has been a good friend of mine for, I'm afraid to say, over 20 years. Uh, Wayne, Wayne and I used to work together at the same uh, facility for 20 years. Uh, and then he uh, recently left to open his own place. Um, and uh, now he's a business owner and I'm a business owner and we both have a little bit less hair and a little bit more gray in our beard than when we first met, but still cranking along and uh, changing lives one rep at a time. Uh, Wayne, welcome to the show, man. It's good to have you on. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Uh, you have one of my favorite podcasts. So I appreciate you having me on. Uh, well, you know, I've been wanting to get you on for a long time and, um, and I've been kind of nipping at your heels to open up your own, own, own place for a long time. And you finally did it. Uh, and I told you, you were going to crush it and you are crushing it. Yeah. So, um, I'm just ha happy to have you on the show. Glad to, uh, you know, talk to you anytime because you ask anybody who knows Wayne or who has met Wayne. And they will say nothing but good things about him. Uh, they, they'll tell you that he's a great trainer, which he is. He's a great person, which he is. Uh, and what we're going to try to find out today is, is he a good business owner? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it's a whole different ball game, isn't it? Whole different ball game. It's like, yeah. uh, it's like tennis and ping pong. They look yeah. the same, but they're not. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. The balls come at you a lot faster, a lot harder <laughs> when you're the business owner versus the I trainer. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So um, just to give you a little bit of background on Wayne, he came from a PT. You started working, when you started working there? 19, 2000. 2000. 2000. Actually, yeah, 2000. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he started working at the same facility I was at uh, for 2000, in, uh, 2000 yep. and worked there until when? Uh, well, 18, uh, December 7th of 2018. Okay. Yeah. I left in 2013 and you left in 2018 yep. um, and then opened up Train to Perform right away and hit the ground running. Yep. So... Um, Walk us through. So I know you spent a good 20 years learning how you came from a PT background yeah, and then so, you made the transition to training. You want to walk the listeners through that? So, um, so my, my true background is in exercise science. Um, and, uh, I went to Southern Illinois at Carbondale and then after school, uh, I was thinking about going back to school for PT. So I said, well, what better way to know if that's the right decision than get an opportunity to work with one? So I worked with a PT for three years. Um, I, actually, I worked for a company called Health South Rehab. I don't, I'm not even sure if it's still around. Health South Rehab in Creek Corps. And I worked with them for about a year and a half. And I was basically like a, um, almost like a physical therapy assistant, a rehab assistant. And so, you know, I got to uh, exercise with people, uh, do exercise on people with uh, hip replacements, knee replacements, shoulder issues. I taught gait training, crutch training, how to walk up and down steps and stuff like that. And then uh, from there, I got a job at uh, Barnes because I helped South close down and they hired me for the same job. So I did both places for about a year and a half. I uh, decided, um, oh, after three years of doing that, I decided I didn't really want to do PT. But um, I had this cool new skill set uh, of, of working with people with injuries and things like that. I got really comfortable with working with those type of people. Um, during the time at Barnes, uh, my second stint of doing the same thing, I, uh, I went to massage school. 
because I, I I'm I'm very I oh love yeah I, I forgot I, I forgot to, about that yeah yeah, yeah. I, I love to learn I, I love to get educated I love to challenge myself and so I went to massage school and I really I didn't have interest in doing that as a career it's just I knew that I could get it paid for through the company and I wanted to learn the skill set and you know unless my hands get cut off I can always use them and uh, so I did that so and then let me fast go back a little bit in uh, college I worked with an athletic trainer for two years also so I had this like exercise science athletic training physical therapy massage therapy kind of background and um, I also worked with a nurse a couple years too and so I, I use all of those things and all those tools uh, in my training. You know, I know how to wrap ankles, like athletic train. I know how to do all that stuff. And so I add all those tools in my training. Um, and from there, um, uh, after massage school, I was looking to leave uh, uh, Barnes. And then uh, that's when I went to our old location and, and got a job there. Yeah. And it was the perfect fit. It was the perfect fit. Uh, at that time, sorry about it. that's my door. <laughs> at that time, there were, uh, there were, uh, I don't know, when I first started, it was like 12 of us. Yep. And it was just perfect. You know, I came from a small town. Everyone knew each other in there. It's kind of a small town atmosphere. And that's, that's kind of where I got into training. Um, I always train, but I never push for it as a career until I start working with you guys. Yeah. And, and I think that's really important because we were one of the first personal, that was one of the first, one of the first personal training studios in St. Louis. Yeah. At the time it was just one, us and one other place right. that did strictly personal training as a right. studio model. Yeah. Now you find them everywhere. And we did that one-on-one -on -one model. And I think that, um, that taught us how to really focus in, take care of customer service, customer experience, producing right. results one-on-one. -on -one. And I know since you've left there, you've gone to the small group model. Correct. So, um, tell us about um, Train to Perform and the model that you had in your head before you opened. Okay. And then the right. model that uh, you had to change to once you opened. That's a great question. Well, before I open, you know, when you have a lot of success over a long period of time, you know, I had a 92% retention rate over an 18, 19 year career. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of feel yourself a little bit. Right. Oh, so when I open up, I was like, man, I'm about to kill this. I'm ready to go. I done read every book. I done been to the seminars. I'm ready to grow. I got all my friends doing it. They're pushed, they're pumping me up. And you, you come in here and it's, it's, it's not like that. You, uh, you know, I, I had the systems on paper, but I never put them together with real people. You know, you don't take into account that you might do a small group session with a uh, two 40 year old, 70 year old and a 12 year old. And it right. has to work. <laughs> it has to work. <laughs> And so my model, I, as crazy as that may sound, I, I've always been interested in this physical therapy, therapeutic kind of training, but I've always been interested in sports, big time. And so I wanted this kind of blended, integrated model. And I always thought about me being at my best, I worked on cardiovascular work, strength training, flexibility, and mobility. But you and I both know the average person out there, they might, if they're working out, they might only be doing one. You know, maybe they only do yoga. Maybe they only run. Maybe they only do strength training. So I wanted a, a model that worked on everything. And so uh, what we do here, we do strength training. We do, I do stick mobility, but I also do body weight mobility in the class also. It's not just stick. Um, well, we use the stick as the attention getter. And we do, we do use it, but I do a lot of mob mobility work. And then my cardiovascular class is, is a boxing class. And so the way I have it set up, um, initially I had it set up, you can do five sessions, uh, eight sessions, or unlimited. 
okay? Because of the size of my gym, I didn't, I didn't have a large group or team or anything like that. And so I, I came in with that model and people really gravitated toward the unlimited because I, I provided opportunity for people that had a chance to work out every day. And the way the model set up on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, we, you can do boxing and stick mobility. And then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you can do strength training. And I do have some strength training on Tuesday, Thursday also. So you got people who never worked out in their life coming in, losing 40 pounds. They can touch the toes. They feel great. They're telling the whole family about it. You know, I'm getting a lot of people here who never trained ever in their life, never even thought they'd join a gym. So I'm trying, I'm trying to get into that 80 something percent of people that, that need to train that we're all fighting to get, you know. Yep, that's the gold mine right there. Uh, everybody's fighting over the twenty. Only you and I are fighting over the eighty. So yeah, yeah, we, exactly. we got we got a leg up on that one. Exactly. But you know, one of the things that I always uh, respected about you, uh, other than like just your level of professionalism, your attention to detail, but you were able to carve a niche out for yourself as a as a boxing guy. It's the thing that I liked about you uh, that separated you from the other people teaching boxing is that you were very technical about it. Yeah. You didn't just have put gloves, have people put gloves on and hit a bag. You taught them the, the how to box, the right. technical aspect of boxing right. and footwork and things like that. So you carved that niche out ahead of time. Um, and so you took that into um, your uh, train of form. Yeah. And then you also added the stick mobility on top of that as classes that are um, adjuncts to your small group training. Correct. Right. So, Correct. so when you, when did you open train and perform? I opened January 7th and uh, that happens to be my birthday. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, January 7th, 19, yeah. right. Of yeah. 2019. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And how many clients did you have when you opened up? Ooh, maybe like seven, seven. Okay. Yeah. And then as of January 7th, 2020. How many did I have? Yeah. How many did you have? I had about 73. 73. From yeah. seven to 73 in one year. Because I remember, I, uh, I think I took you out for uh, lunch for your birthday. Right. And, you were, and we were talking um, and neither one of us saw what was coming at that time. Uh -huh. um, so that's pretty damn good from seven, seven clients to 70, uh, 73. And you're a one man show right now. Uh, uh -huh. so you're crushing it. What was your average EFT per client? Uh, 289, 289. So 73 people at yeah. 289 and your overhead's not that big because uh -huh. like you said, it's just you, you're the only payroll expense and everybody knows that's always going to be your biggest expense. Uh -huh. Um, and how big is your space just all together? Just, a little bit under actually 900 square feet just under, so yeah so under 900 square feet so that's pretty that's pretty fucking impressive man yeah. I, I i don't i don't have to, i i don't mind telling you that that that's pretty yeah. fucking impressive yeah. to have 73 people in that kind of square footage your rent's not that high utilities aren't that high um and it's, it's just you but you know that means you're working your ass off too though <laughs> yeah, there's there's no replace for the hustle. And like Thomas Plummer says, uh -huh. success takes hard work, man. And there's nothing uh -huh. sexy about that. Oh, big time. Yeah. yeah. So um, so you were rolling and then COVID hit. Yeah. So walk us through what that was like for you right before the shutdown and how you transitioned through the shutdown. And how many clients January, did you lose? January, February, March. I mean, I was coming out strong. <laughs> like strong out the box and COVID hit and I was just like, well, let me, let me start that over. I, when COVID hit, from what I heard, it was only going to be 30 days. We're going to be out 30 days. So I told all my clients, Hey, I'm going to keep running your car for the 30 days and then we'll be back in. Well, two weeks into the 30, they're like, Oh, it's going to be longer. And so I had to shut every, I, I shut everyone's car down. I, I, I shut their cars down. And some people might say, that's crazy. Why would you do that? I just, I felt it was the right thing to do. I just, in my heart, I just felt it was the right thing to do. So I did it. And they were very appreciative of that. They were happy that I did that. I, I communicated with them and everything and let them know. And um, 
I was just, I didn't, you know, we just didn't know how long it was going to be. And so the first week out, man, I just, I'm just sitting around and I'm not a sit around person. Yeah. I got on the scale and I was like, what the hell? I gained like seven pounds or something like, I don't know, like a short time span. So I was like, I got, I, I can't do this. So I got up, started training twice a day. Uh, got my Facebook page pumping hard, going hard with that. Um, got the gym clean, Stanley Steamer. I just started doing all kinds of stuff. Got my newsletter going more frequently. I just started doing everything I could to keep my clients going. I started Zoom workouts and yeah, I just did everything I could to just keep it going, keep the momentum going and not, and not lose that momentum. Um, currently, um, as of today, um, I just counted my clients up because I thought you'd ask me that. And I have 38 total clients. Um, okay. 10 of those clients are brand new. Yeah, and I want to I want to get to that because that's also impressive. But how many how many clients did you have on Zoom workouts that were paying you during Over COVID? The uh, time period, uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. 13. So then you reopened with essentially well, yet um, twenty eight clients. You reopened with twenty eight clients. So walk us through the reopening and what that was like. Like, um, because I know when we've been open the same amount of time, you and I right. have, right. And, or reopened. Um, and I thought most of the focus was going to be on like safety, mass, cleanliness, right. and all that stuff. And I found that the people that initially came back, that they didn't care about that. Right. Did you find that to be true with you as well? Well, they make fun of me because uh, my gym is really clean. They call me OCD. I'll be training someone wiping the wall down at the same time. Mm -hmm. So they felt, they felt very secure with the cleanliness of my gym. Um, it's been a trickling effect. So those 28 people didn't come back quickly. It's been a trickling effect. Like one, one of those 38 just came back yesterday. So it's been a few people every week. Mm -hmm. um, the cool thing is I probably have another 40 people who've already paid. So I, I believe they're coming back. At least I hope not. None of them said, Hey, can I get a refund or anything? So I believe they're coming back. Uh, some told me August when the kids go back to school, you know, different time frames. So I'm trying to get those people to do zoom. But, um, as far as the process, I kept in touch with them the whole time. Um, uh, I showed them I was cleaning the place. I showed them all the new things I put in here. I did a video. I did a video with me walking through the gym, showing them the hand sanitizer, the cleaning supplies, uh, showing the thermometer, uh, just showing them everything and talking through the video, telling them how it's gonna be. I took, um, I did something not too long ago. I took um, some chalk, some, um, I forgot what it's called, paint chalk. And I put it on my, uh, uh, my uh, turf and I put the turf in the fours. So people automatically go into their own square and they can work out in their own square. So that's something I added. And every day I'm always thinking of, a, of an added value or a way to better what I'm doing. Like I always feel like there's something better. So I'm always seeking that. Yeah. So of the people that came back initially, what was their major concern versus the people? What were the major concerns of the people who came back later? You know what? None of them really voiced anything to me. Mm -hmm. um, some of that good number of people were on Zoom. So they've been with me the whole time. I've been out updating before the workout. Um, so no one really voiced any major concerns. I tried to cover everything to minimize the questions coming at me. So I tried to cover everything, you know. Um, if there is something, no one said anything yet. You know, I got hand sanitizers, I got white, I, I, I spray the floor between sessions. Um, I, I, I do water bottles now instead of my water machine. Um, yep. I just try to cover everything. Um, I'll give everyone their own equipment. So they can work out their own equipment. The people who are sharing, I wipe off the equipment uh, before they, when they switch. 
So I, I haven't heard anything, Jim. I'm sure there's something, but no one's actually came up to me and said anything. I asked them okay. too. I always ask them. Yeah, I get them involved with the gym. I tell them this is your gym. So I try to get them involved. Yeah. yeah. And then of, of the 10 new people. Yes. So you got 10 new people in yeah. three weeks. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Is this the end of the third week? Yeah. So where did they come from? Uh, relationships. I, I'll give you an example of one. You'll laugh at this. One guy is a Facebook friend. When I first started doing massage, I took a part-time job at the mall to do chair massage so I can practice my new skills. And I would go there once a week. I remember. So I, met the mall. <laughs> I, met, I, the, I met this guy at the mall 2000. <laughs> We've been Facebook friends for I don't know how many years. Mm -hmm. That's the person who reached out to me. So a lot of his relationships that I've had just over the years, um, that's, that's essentially what it is as far as the Zoom. Yeah. Uh, some of the new people come in um, posting social media. People contact me. Or they'll, uh, they'll follow me. They follow me, I reach out to them and thank them for following me, and then I invite them in. I've probably gotten about 25 clients like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I know you have a, uh, a big social media following that um, yeah. you use to bring in new clients. But what I found, because uh, we, we've got a big influx of new people too, with really almost zero advertising. I mean, we put out a banner. Yeah. And, and we've picked up 13 new people since we've opened. That's and cool. um, most of them are just feeling out of shape and a little yeah. cabin fever and they wow. want to get back in shape. And the personal training is more appealing to them Yes. than the big box gyms. Yes. So, I mean, I think it's a, I think right now is if you can be open and you can be safe, um, then now is the time to be a personal training studio more than ever. I mean, I feel like we already had a big advantage over like big box gyms, right. but I think it's even more pronounced now with everybody, everybody's fears about COVID. Um, have you found that to be true with your clientele? I 100% I agree. Um, when I did the market analysis and my business plan, I knew, and this was my second location. I have to tell you the first story of how I got to this spot. But anyway, um, when, I, when I did the market analysis and went through all the business stuff, I recognized that my size would be a weakness, but I couldn't deny the rent. I just couldn't deny this rent. And the, and the location is ridiculous. So I was like, I gotta at least get in this neighborhood. I could find another place later down the line. Um, one of the things that shocked me is people want to be in a smaller space. So what I thought was my disadvantage is a strength now. So people want to be in a smaller space. Um, same with yours, some of them had cabin fever. Some of them, um, want to work out with a trainer for the first time because they've sat around for three months. So it's a, it's a wide variety of reasons people are coming in. Yeah. And I, and I think to your point, what you said before about starting over, my last guest, uh, Shannon said the same thing. It's, it's a whole different landscape, right? The whole market has changed. Right. And so you have to change with it. So it is like, like, okay, that was the last game. You yep. know, like you said before, uh, you want to share that story about, you know, what you said about Jordan and like oh, starting yeah. over. Like you feel like you're starting yeah. over now? Yeah, uh, I was equating like, okay, I had 73 people. So that's like Jordan scoring 31 a game as his average, season average. But after the season's over, he has to work out. He has to train. He has to get right back to it. There's no guarantee he's going to average 31 a game. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm just starting all over in my head, you know. Right. Um, if, if I get 70 new people and my other ones come back, great. Great, but I'm, I'm working like they're not coming back. Yeah. I mean, I want them to, and they pay right. for it. I, I, have to, I have to play games in my head to kind of push myself. Yep, absolutely. I, and I agree with you, and I think some of them are going to come back um, over time, uh, yep. like you said. But the key is making them safe coming back and yep. starting over. So – of the new people, because that's what really intrigues me is all these new people, because I did not see that coming. So 
And uh, for you as well, I mean, 10 new clients in three weeks yeah. is impressive by any means, yeah. uh, but especially just coming out of the COVID shutdown. So yeah. what do you think you need to do from a marketing standpoint to capture more people like that? What, it, what does that um, avatar look like? I think, uh, I think now, uh, not only do we market services, we market um, our precautions and, and safety of what we're doing. And then we, sh we show social proof. You know, we show, uh, we show someone who looks like someone out there with a mask on exercise and us training them. So we yeah. show that. Um, I, I think those are a couple of the main things. You know, as we both know, there's no guarantee, but all we can do is show the effort the clients really appreciate the effort. I've gotten calls from people from other gyms who are upset because the, uh, some of the other gyms aren't showing the effort to, to show the care, you know? And so just, just showing the effort, um, social media, social proof, uh, talking about the products you use, the safety of it, you know, stuff like that. I think that makes people feel it really comfortable. I think that's what it is. Yeah, I agree. I mean, because you can say that you're cleaning and say your gym is clean yeah. all day long. Right. But if they don't see it, they don't believe right. it. This is right. this is the show me state, right? Oh yeah. So show yeah. me how clean you are. Oh, yeah. um, so I think it's a combination of showing all of the uh, precautions and procedures, and but I also think you need to highlight the other aspects, like you said, your size is now an asset. Right, right. That, that is, you know, it's personal training and right. that you can control the environment a little bit more. You can be a little bit more surgical with your safety and procedures yeah. and things yeah. like that. And yeah. I think that will capture both of those markets. I think it'll right. capture the people who are uh, dying from cabin fever, gotten out of shape over COVID and yeah. they want to get back in shape in a safe environment. And then the other people who may be a little bit timid are still watching, you know, kind of peeking out from their drapes, you right. know, <laughs> right. um, and, but you got to make them feel comfortable. Like, Hey, um, people are coming to this gym. It looks clean. I see you cleaning. Uh, no one's dying. You know, right. maybe I'll come back. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's what people are waiting on. Yeah. And then, so, um, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, there's a couple of one is like, go through your model because you offer a tremendous value to your clients. So you do the, the small group training. Uh, you kind of do the Thomas Plummer, but a little yeah. bit different. Yeah. Um, Cause you do the, the small group training, you have yeah. small group training packages. Right. And then they, if they, uh, do they have to sign up extra or are the boxing and all the classes yeah. included? So I do. So let me, let me take it from the top. So I do one-on-one. -on -one. I do some semi-private where I do two people. I do four people, small group. And I do a per session rate, which I'll tell you about that. And then I do, uh, and now the new thing is Zoom. I do Zoom now, it's part of my business. So if a person, and I set it up so you can do it multiple ways, but here, here's the general way it works. Um, you can come in and do eight sessions, 12 sessions or unlimited. The person that does eight sessions can only do strength training. The person that does 12 can do two strength, one mobility or two strength, one boxing or three strength. The person that does the, um, unlimited can do all of it. They can do mobility work and here's how it may look. Here's how, here's how it could look on paper. A person can come in and do, uh, they can do strength training Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and maybe they box Tuesday, Thursday. Okay, maybe they do mobility work on Saturday. But I would say the average person who does that package does four sessions a week. Yeah. About four sessions a week. And what's your most popular membership? That, that's the most popular one. The unlimited. And what's the price, what are the price points? That's, for the that's 8, 12, and unlimited. I just changed it. I just changed it. Let me go over the old one. I'll tell you the new one. Mm -hmm. The old one was, uh, I used to do five sessions at 189, uh, eight sessions at 249, and then the unlimited at 289. And I changed it for multiple reasons. One, because it should have been higher. It needed to be higher. Two, 
Uh, you and I both know if a person doesn't exercise a minimum of eight times a month, they quit. Mm -hmm. I got rid of the five. So I still have the eight. I, take, I took the 289 uh, to 12. And now I'm doing, um, I'm doing 329 for the unlimited now. Okay. Yeah. And of the 10 people that signed up, how many, how many of them bought the unlimited? Um, actually, neither one of those people, actually one. No, no, no. Let me take that back. Let me start over. Um, three bought the unlimited, three doing Zoom, and a couple of other ones are doing like 249. Okay. And what's the price point for the Zoom? Oh, I'm doing 160. 160. One. Yeah. Okay. And they can work. It's an unlimited Zoom. They can work oh, out. Okay. Yeah, they can work out four days a week. Okay. Actually, actually, they can work out up to five. I only have seven times. So I have three morning, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I have four evening times. And I got one girl doing five days a week. The rest of them are doing three, two to three. Okay, so you have set times and they have to book within those times. Exactly. Okay, nice. Okay. You want six a month on that. Okay, and then did anybody blink when you raised your prices? No, because I it, it hasn't affected my current, current members. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The new people don't know the difference. They just pay it. Yeah, they pay. Yeah. It. Yeah, yeah um, we did the same thing. We raised our prices and simplified our uh, offerings. Mm -hmm. And we uh, eliminated the four. And now we just have eight, 12 and unlimited. Okay. Um, and then we do punch cards. But we raised our prices and the new clients did, they haven't batted an eye. Yeah. You know? Well, they, you already have a following. Like they don't know unless someone tells yeah. them. Yeah. Exactly. But I think also it's playing up to our, you know, your strength. You know, right. hey, this is a small studio, limited. You get customer right. service out the wazoo. It's a great right. value. It's worth it. I mean, we're talking six times a week for 329. Come on. You yeah. can't. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. That's now, because you said earlier that you needed to raise your prices. How did you know? How did you come to realize that you needed to raise I just, your prices? I just, I... <laughs> I was fighting with it before I opened of doing, having it at what it is. Mm -hmm. Kind of glad I didn't. Cause at that time I was doing the uh, $99 unlimited and I got them to do everything for that unlimited. So they're coming in doing boxing, mobility. And, and once that time was over, they wanted the highest one. They wanted the 289. It just it just worked out so well. It worked because you, you when you when you meet with them again, you say, "Well, what do you want to take away?" It's like giving a kid three cookies and saying, "Here's one," you know. And uh, uh -huh. it it just worked. It just worked okay. so well, man. It just worked so it, well. But I go ahead. And the ninety nine was your intro offer. Yeah. Nobody had a different had a uh, problem going from ninety nine to two eighty nine. No, because of the value. I mean. Okay. You know, I let them see it too. I let some of them yeah. see it before, you know, hey, this is what it is. Some of them bought me with it. Man, they, they paid it. They paid yeah. it. I yeah. mean, for a year. They paid it for a year. Yeah. Those yeah. are some of my early clients, December, January, yeah. February. Yeah. Yeah. And why do you think you set the price point there and then later realize that it needed to be higher? I mean, did, were you like afraid that people would balk at the price? Or you just didn't know? Of both. Maybe a mixture of both. Okay. Maybe, well, I knew I knew my value was worthy of what it was, but I I had to go through that learning phase, you know. I thought they'd balk at it, but now I don't really worry about it because I, I know what I'm doing here and I, I know what I'm giving. It's yeah. great. Yeah. It's it's undeniable. Just how I bring people in and it's just I'm, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying it's just, I put a lot into it. A lot. Yeah. 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 I know that. So, I mean, that's a, that's an interesting point. So let's talk about sh shifting from a trainer. You're a trainer for, you know, yeah. over two decades. Yeah. Yep. And now you're an owner operator. Yeah. So you know how to train, you can train people in your sleep. Right. So what, 
what were some of the biggest hurdles for you shifting into an owner mindset? Yeah. So this goes for anyone and, and, form, and trainers who are uh, who own business know what I'm talking about. You, when you first start, when you own a business, your weaknesses come out quickly, quickly. If you're unorganized, whatever, whatever you're not good at, it shows right away. And so you really have to work hard to plug the gaps in or the holes in, in, in regards to where you're, where you're weak. Um, you know, being more organized. If you're not punctual, you better be punctual. You know, you gotta, you gotta change it up. You just can't, you gotta get out of who you were. You know, you can't grow being the same person. You got to change who you were and you got to be okay with changing who you were. You, you can't be tied to who you are. You just got to get out of that. Um, but I, one of the things I did, Jim, I really worked on um, leadership and I really worked on getting myself um, really uncomfortable because I knew I was about to go through some things. So, you know, I joined different groups. Um, business groups, uh, Toastmasters, started doing speaking. I started doing that in 2017 as I was preparing to make the transition. Yeah, and it's something I remember we I, talked about that. Yeah, I have to work at, um, you have to work at it every day. Like there's no off days to leadership. Yeah. You know, there's no off, so personal development is daily. It's an email, a podcast, whatever. You, you know, you have to work on it at all times. Yeah. You know, the business grows as you grow. It flows as you flow. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But um, yeah, it was it was it was a transition, man. I had to really change my frame. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but you've done it beautifully. So um, I mean, in, in like I, I think you're gonna be super successful again, uh coming out of COVID. Um, but let's talk about the next step for you. I mean, because I know we talked about this earlier. I, matter yeah. of fact, I talked to you about it back in January. It's yeah. like, so you're getting, I mean, especially in January, you had, you know, 70 plus clients yourself. Right. That's, right. A, that's a hell of a workload. Yeah. So what's next? Do you, do you hire somebody? Do you, I mean, were you th I know you were thinking about hiring somebody. Yeah. What do you hire for? I mean, because going back to, like you said, when you're a business owner, you got a weakness is going to show up quick. Yeah. So what, what was your thinking? thought process when you're considering bringing somebody on into the business to help you? Yeah. So, uh, uh, pre COVID, I was actually talking to a couple people. Um, one, one young man was, uh, just graduated from college and he's really interested in getting in training, and perhaps owning his own business. So I thought he would be a perfect, just his presentation, how he approached me. You know, I was really impressed with the kid and, uh, we've been staying in touch and, um, He's someone I'm thinking about bringing on. Um, As a trainer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, I have a former coworker who worked the front desk at the other location. She wants to do some personal assistant work for me. Okay. So she, reached out to me. she reached out to me and said, hey, whatever you need me to do, if you need me to uh, go get your supplies, run your errands. So she's going to do that. And I have another friend who does uh, some graphic work, newsletters, stuff, anything I need. She uh, does my emails. So the team is like, it's coming together very well. Um, but I, I can't just work with anyone. It has to be like, this kid is so impressive how he approached me. You know, like, man, this kid's really impressive. And so it has to be someone teachable, someone with some humility, someone who um, cares about people, you know? And, you know, I know it's not gonna be perfect. I, I know because I see you guys. I, I learn from you guys. I learn from my past work, you know, because those are the experiences I have to pull from. Yeah. Everything else is a new experience. So I, I pull from the past and learn from the new. But um, I, I do want to hire. I do want to grow. And I do want to get into a larger location. It's a little weird now. My thought process is like, I definitely want a larger location. But now my mindset is like with this COVID, man, how large do I go now, you know? Right. Know, like, do I go 3,000 square feet? Do I go 5,000? So, you know, we, we got to navigate those waters as we get closer to making that decision. Yeah. And, and that involves a lot because when you open up with just under 900 square feet, do you think 
you know, this might be too big for me? Not at all. I mean, no? I, I just came from 10,000 square foot gym. So <laughs> I, was, I was going to, I was supposed to be in another space and it didn't work out. And that was about 1200 square feet. Okay. So once I found this place, I, I was like, this is a way better location. Uh, the estimated walkthrough is 13,000 people a day. You know, so yeah. this is a prime area. It's growing. It just, it met all the needs. It, you know, I was, I was a little hesitant on the size of it, but it, it, it just worked out. I made it work. I made yeah. it work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Like I said, working hard is uh, nothing new to you. All right. So, but now you're talking about, are you looking at a bigger space? Are you talking about a bigger space? Well, or? I or you kind of got to get on your feet from post COVID. Well, D all the above, you know, I'm okay. trying to get on my feet. I'm trying to uh, get these clients back in here. I'm looking at spaces cause I'm starting to see a lot of spaces open yep. um, at another year. However, I'm still looking. I still want to keep my eyes open. I don't want to wait to the last minute. I want to be prepared. Um, so I'm working on all those things. Um, looking around, um, potentially bringing some people in in the future as I build back up. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking to do all those things. Yep. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I'm excited for you. I know you're going to be killing it. So my, I want to ask you, like, if you could go back and talk to Wayne January 2019. Actually, let's yeah. go December 2018, right before you yeah. open. Yeah, because I know what a mad dash it was for you, and it was a learning curve just opening the place, yeah. trying to get your yeah. your logo, your trademark, your business model, your rent, you know, your lease, all yeah. of that stuff. But if you could, if Wayne today could go back and talk to Wayne of December two thousand eighteen, a month before you open your business, what would you tell him? Embrace the journey, because it's going to be a hell of it's like riding a Bronco. <laughs> embrace the journey I think I was in a for several months I was in a anxiety state you know you know those movies where people wake up and like, <laughs> yeah. I felt like I was like that for a while and I really wasn't I, I was enjoying having a business I was enjoying it, but I don't think I enjoyed it the way I should have the way I am now I'm having yeah. fun now you know yeah. I, I, I get to let my hair down, so to speak, you know, <laughs> if I had hair. Yeah, know? well, let your beard out. Um, so, like, would you tell them to, like, don't focus so much on this, focus more on this. That's not going to be important. This is more important, like things like that. Yeah, just focusing on the client. Even with me being in a new business, one of the things I learned that if everything isn't all together, the effort the care and the communication and the education. Keep plug, you know, because one of the things I tried to do, Jim, I, I tried to get away from what made me successful and try all these new things. And I had that moment like, man, you know, you had a good retention rate. You had a good run as a trainer. Why are you not using all those things? Once I start using those things, things start like coming quick, like not quick, but things were moving. You yeah, know? started to flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I think with training, one of the things, or a couple of things, I think education and customer service are the two things that every gym should try to focus on because those things will separate you from, from a lot of other gyms. And I, I give a great deal of customer service and care here. Um, I probably talk on the phone more now than I ever have. Uh, Cause I know a lot of people text. I call my clients and check on them and talk and they always thank me. They all, I've never had a client not thank me for that phone call. So they're very appreciative of that. So, yeah. And there's a couple of questions in there. So one, you said like you were, when you opened up, you were full of anxiety and now you're happy. So what has changed between then and now where you feel like now you're enjoying the join the, the bride? I think just time, um, maturing as an owner, you know, with the three phases, uh, technician, manager, you know. Entrepreneur, entrepreneur. yeah. So you, I think you just mature. I think uh, after several months, you're like, I'm still here. I'm good. I'm, I'm making money. I'm 
I'm doing okay, you know? And uh, I think just time, Jim. The, okay. the, not, the, not, the unknown makes us all fearful. Uh, I mean, look at COVID. The unknown yeah. makes us all a little bit concerned. So I think just time. I was able to uh, mature over the year, uh, a lot more comfortable. Um, you know, you still have stress, and I call it, it's called you stress. You stress mm -hmm. is that positive stress that's necessary for you to perform. That's never going to go away because I always want to get my best. That's how you break world records, you know, but, but I had a little bit of distress. Like, man, I just left my job, you know, uh, my six month income is running out, you know, yeah. <laughs> I got people in here, you know, I'm going to be on the corner break dancing. <laughs> I don't get people in with a costume on. <laughs> Flip, flipping your sign. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so. Yeah. yeah. It's just maturity and time. It just takes okay. time. So anybody out there who has that fear, it'll, it'll go away. Uh, just focus on the service, focus on the work, and focus on personal development. All right. And, and why the phone calls versus texts or emails? I just want to be different in regards to um, everybody texts. It's way different to talk to someone. Yeah. Way different. And they're, they're just like, man, this dude called me. Like, they love it. Like, and I still text, don't get me wrong, but the phone calls really, especially over COVID, everybody's yeah. like, man, you called me? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm just, I just want to see how he's doing, man. I just want to talk, you know? They're like, yeah. I have thanks, man, you know? So it was, yeah. it was good. And you, you can feel someone with their voice. You can't feel a text. You know, a text can give you a miscommunication sometimes. Right. I've had that in my dating life. <laughs> <laughs> we all have. Yeah, but, but, the, <laughs> but the voice, like that, there's something about that. When you're with yeah. someone, you can, you can hear the energy, the, the fear, the concern, you can hear all that. Yeah. yeah. I agree with you. I mean, because um, one of the guests said, like, especially in this age where everybody wants to automate everything, you know, automated text, automatic emails, you got uh, drip campaigns, all that stuff, retargeting campaigns, right. all of that marketing, but nothing replaces a phone call. And, it's, and you're not going to get somebody to sign up or sign a membership contract unless you speak to them one on one. They're not going to sign up over an email or a text. You right. got to talk to them either in person or on the phone. Just, right. it's just like you said, it's like dating, you know, you're not just going to text an email back and then say, Oh, meet me here. It's like, usually you set up a phone call so you can right. see if, like you said, if you're vibing with the person or not. Right. Right. So, yeah. So I think that's so important. I think automation has its place, but yeah. I think that personal touch will always have a place in, I in, agree. in the I want to art of it. sales. Yeah. People like that. And no one, no one complains about VIP or first class. No one. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. A added, that's a bonus, easy added value. Just call yeah. someone to check on. I just yeah. checked on someone, right? He had his first workout yesterday. He said, man, that workout was great, man. Thank you so much for calling. And thank you for your patience with me yesterday. That was my first time. I said, no, nah, that's what we're here for. Yeah. I said, wait. I said, in the next three weeks, man, we're going to get you a fight. Because he did his first boxing workout. He started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and then you you always try to give them their fight names too i remember that oh i do oh my god <laughs> crazy. damn people come up to me after the workout you didn't, what's my name you didn't tell me what my name was what <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a great time so yeah. now what we're gonna do we're gonna put up a wall with them with them holding their gloves up and we're gonna have all their names on the wall yeah all their fight names yeah so people are gonna want to be on the wall now yeah yeah, that's I don't awesome. want to make some criteria that's not easy. Like you're gonna have to work to get on the wall. Okay. All right. Yeah, you're not just right. getting on the wall because you signed up for class. Right, yeah. yeah you got to earn All right. It. All right. Well, Wayne, this has been great. It's always good catching up with you, man. That's I always awesome. enjoy it. Um, so now we get to my favorite part of the show. Yes. So, and that's the three questions. So that I ask most guests. So and I and I know you've seen the show, so you probably know what's coming. Okay. But I don't care because these are usually the best answers. And I want to hear what you have to say. So what has been your most successful failure? And by that, I mean, at the time, it seemed like a devastating loss that you weren't going to be able to recover from. But you were able to take life lessons from that that propelled you to greater success down the road. 
Jim, I think, uh, I think just leaving a job of 19 years and opening a business, that was, it's probably one of the greatest things and one of the craziest things I've ever done at the same time. And man, I've, I've been in sessions here where at the end of the session, I start laughing. And the clients are like, why are you laughing? I'm like, that workout was a failure. And they're like, they didn't know the difference. Mm -hmm. But it's just what I missed being out from COVID. Every day in here, I get to learn. It just feeds my thirst. And I get to learn every day. And I love it. And I missed that part of it. So I had to seek other ways to get that same energy. And so I think opening the business was, I mean, there was a lot of failures in the beginning, lots. I mean, even from, from the group warm up to everything, even though I had everything down and in place, I had not done it with the bodies. I did some of it with one-on-ones and I used my one-on-ones at the other location to help set up a lot of my systems. But there's nothing, there's nothing like doing it live. There's nothing like doing it real, you know? And, and I, I had to learn a lot. And I'm still learning every day, every day. And I'm way more comfortable with failing, which it sounds weird, because I'm way more comfortable with failing. I can fail and just be like, all right, man, okay, I gotta go to the next. I'm okay with it now. I'm totally cool with failing over and over and over. And I've never been like that. Yeah. Now, if I don't like to lose sporting games, get, uh, board games. I don't like losing in anything. Uh, you take a lot of losses when you when you become on, and that's just part yeah. of the process. Every day. Yep. Every day. Yep. And, and just to illustrate for the listeners why that was so scary for you to leave the job of 19 years, and I left there after 22 years, is yeah. because. It was pretty good, right? Yeah. You made yeah. six figures. Yep. You had a 401k. You had paid yep. time off. Yep. You didn't really have to work to get clients. You yep. know, uh, client retention. The facility was amazing. Yep. I mean, it was a. I mean, it was a good life. It was yeah. a good life. But yeah. to leave that, yeah, for the uncertainty of opening your own business. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you like saying, "Am I crazy?" Yeah. yeah, I've said it after a workout. I'm like, I can't believe I'm doing this. My client's like, what? I'm like, oh, never mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've done that like, several times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking out loud, like, oh, never mind. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm, doing the warm -up. I'm looking at the people doing the group warm up. I'm doing it with them. And I'm like, oh my God, I left my job. You know, it started yeah. hitting me, you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, it's uh for those who want to do it or thinking about doing it. Um, you know the cool thing about these lives we live, you don't you don't have to be tied to who you've been. You know you can change who you are at any time, and become something totally different. You know I've yeah. never been a public speaker or, um, you know I I spoke to like ten different companies last year. I've never done that. I never even dreamed of doing that. But I was just, I was very unfulfilled, even though we had all those great benefits. Mm -hmm. I was unfulfilled and I, I felt like I wanted to help more than 45 people that I've been working with. And as much as I love those 45 people, love them to death, still keep in touch with a ton of them, um, some of them weren't, you know, there for that same journey I was on. You know, they were just, it was just, they got the money, they can afford it. It's just part of their routine. And uh, I just wanted something greater and I wanted to do something greater. And I didn't want to be limited. You know, I can, I can do anything now. I can train a kid on the track. I can go speak to a company. I can write a book. I can do Zoom um, interviews like you're doing, which I've been doing. You know, I, you know, there's no limit, you know? And if you're not tied to who you've been, and you want to make a change in your life, I say go for it. But go for it in a relentless, aggressive fashion. Know that you're going to take some bumps, but at the end of the road, it's worth it. It's totally worth yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. All right. And then 
in your time in the fitness industry, we're talking over two decades, what has been the biggest surprise that you've had to deal with that you did not see coming? At the new facility? Man, no, I mean, just in general. Oh, I, let me just speak on here. Okay. I, I think I think one of the biggest shocks for me out of the 73 people I've been working with, let's say, let's say 30 of them have had trainers. What shocked me the most is how much they didn't know. When I say didn't know, I'm talking about from how much water to have to doing a push up the proper technique. Like it shocked me. It shocked me that so I when I bring people in, they probably spent a month in like a foundations class before I even put them in the group. Because I just I just I, I don't have time to be, you gotta know. And I, I like quiz them. I like quiz them. Thought about doing some paperwork with it, but I quiz them. So they actually know. They know where the hinge is. They know what lunges are. They know proper push-up technique. That was, that was a shock for me, how much education people didn't have. So we're, I'm heavy, we're heavy education here. Uh, prior to COVID, I had speakers come in and talk. And I've always known I was going to do a podcast. So because of COVID and I can't have the speakers in the gym, the Zoom interviews will probably lead into a podcast in the future. So that's something I always wanted to do anyway. I, I love interviewing people. I don't know if you've seen my interviews. I, I had some fun with them. I did, I've done a couple so far. So I got to check them out. Yeah, I'm going to do more. I'm going to do more. Okay. Um, but we have fun in here. Uh, I have a client who has a restaurant. She brought in uh, vegan and vegetarian food. And I have speakers come in all the time. And that's changed now. Yeah. So now I've got to do it on Zoom. Okay. But I, I think right. education of the, the, the average person out there in regards to training is very, it's, it's not good. Yeah. So when they come to the table, I take them through the three types of training. One-on-one, -on -one, small, uh, small group, and, and team training. I let them know the differences. I break down all that stuff so that they can make an educated uh, decision. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you don't join here, you need to know these things. Yeah. But then they end up joining. <laughs> you give them all, hey, take the puppy home for free. If you don't like yeah, it, bring it yeah, back. Exactly. Um, but I, and I agree with you. Um, I mean, because some clients, you know, everybody's on a continuum, right? Some clients don't want to think. You know, right. I want to be able to turn my brain off, tell me what to do. Am I doing it correctly? Boom. Right. Other clients want to know, right. you know, hey, what do I got to do? What do I got to eat? All this other stuff. But so that's always going to be there. But one of my pet peeves is that I, and I, and I stand by this. I think the majority of personal trainers in the market today, I mean, because it's a lot different than when we came into the market. Right. right? right. Um, I mean, for me, it's been 30 years for you. It's been 20 plus, yeah. you know, and I think the majority of trainers out there today are just bad. Yeah. You know, they, they're, yeah. you know, they like to train and they're into fitness and um, they go and they get a weekend cert, and then wow. now they're calling themselves trainers. Yeah. And but they don't, but they don't take into account their clients' goals, yeah. movement abilities, yeah. or lack thereof, or what might be best for them. What type of program would be best for them? Yeah. You know, and all of that. And I just don't think that the majority of trainers are mature enough, or have learned enough. Like if you got somebody coming out of a four year degree with exercise wow. science, they got the knowledge base, but they still don't know how wow. to train people. Yeah. They don't have the experience. Exactly. Yeah. You know, they don't have the experience. Like you said, it's one thing to have it on paper or have read a case study, but then right. it's another, if you, when you got clients yeah. sitting in front of you and taking them yeah. through it, it's a whole yeah. different, you know, animal yeah. altogether. So I think to your point, I think there's, there's anybody who's looking for a personal trainer, needs to do their homework and right. any trainer out there if you have any deficiency in your game bring it up you know right. because the, the the reason i ask all of my client all of my guests and you included is what did where did you come from what was your background and right. it's because you need to spend you you need to pay those dues you need to learn how to 
to work in PT. You need to learn how to uh, work with clients, attain clients, right. maintain clients, give right. ex exemplary customer service, yeah. be a professional, all right. of those things that they don't teach you in school and they don't right. teach you in a weekend cert. You know, right. so you need to, you need to, you need that experience. I mean, you work for 20 years almost before you open your own business. So that's what yeah. you were bringing into the business. Yeah. You know, yeah. had you not had any of that and you try to open your business, uh, it could have been a lot worse. So I agree with you. And I think there's a lot of bad trainers. So when, and we don't talk about training a lot on the show because it's about the business of fitness, right. but that's part of the business is you better yeah. know your stuff. You know, because yeah. there are great, great, you know, but on the flip side of that is there are great trainers out there who don't make it, who become, you know, break dancers on the corner because they don't know how to market or they don't have a budget, you know, or they don't know how to work the numbers or, you know, all of the, right. all of those things and vice versa. There's a lot of bad trainers that are good at marketing and they're crushing it, even though wow. they're, you know, bad trainers, they, you know, may wow. jack somebody up or something. So that's my soapbox. Uh, I'm gonna get off of it now and get back to our interview. Sorry about that, Wayne. That's all good. Uh, <laughs> but I I agree with you 100% on that. Surprise is that I think it's important to not only educate your trainer but also talk to them in a way that they get it. Right. You know, if you're talking to them about like piriformis and rectus femoris and right. tensor fasciolata and all this other stuff, they're like. Right, right. what am I doing here? But right. if you talk to them in like real world terms and terms yeah. that they can understand that's related to their goals and that sticks with them. Yeah. So, yeah. It helps. It helps. All right. And then the last question is where do you go for your personal professional development? Man, everywhere. Um, obviously seminars. Um, in fact, I got a book right here. I'm about to get into, um, you see it? 15 Commitments of Conscious Leaderships. Yeah. So, okay. uh, uh, seminar, Is it commitments or commandments? Commitments. Okay. Yeah. Commitments. Um, podcasts. Uh, I love your podcast. Your podcast is one of my favorite. I'm not just saying this because I'm on here. I really enjoy it. Um, Thank you. Podcasts, YouTube, reading, seminars, emails, um, anything. I just... I'm like Pac-Man. I just eat it up, man. I love it. <laughs> I'm serious, man. I like every day I wake up to like a motivational speaker. It could be Tony Robbins. It could be anyone. And I and I wake up because uh, uh, the first 20 minutes of your day, your subconscious is open, and you can control the spirit of your day if you start off on the right frame. Um, you know, you might wake up feeling negative. You know, you might wake up and spill some coffee on your shirt and now you're angry. Well, your clients don't deserve that. You know what I mean? So I always try to control the frame of my day by listening to some speaker or, or listening to something that gets me in the right frame because 5.30 a.m., man, they are depending on me. Yeah. And I, I come in here with, I crank the music up a little bit and I come in here with mad energy. Mad energy. And that's really important. So... No one particular place, just wherever I can get it. Like I said, uh, podcasts, books, emails, seminars, talking to people, learning people. Um, I'm in a few different groups, a couple um, networking groups, Toastmasters. I just connected with a, a group that I want to, um, I'm still learning about it, but there's a guy who comes here. He's a really sharp guy, and he started a not-for-profit where he feeds the needy. I'm actually partnering with him to help that organization. I just got these bands made with my logo on them. Uh -huh. I'm going to sell them to the clients after the fourth and the proceeds I'm going to donate to this organization. Cause I just, I really, okay. yeah. So I'm always doing something. I'm always doing something. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Here or the community or I'm just always doing stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. Wayne. Um, well, it was good talking to you, man. Where can people go to find more information about you, reach out with, uh, to you or, you know, start working with you? Well, I'm on everything. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on, uh, Facebook. I'm on everything, but I think, I think I like Instagram the most. 
So I'll, I'll give my uh, personal and my business. So my, my personal is uh, Hawk underscore trains. And if you guys are wondering why Jim calls me Hawk, it's because my last name is Hawkins. Everybody calls me Hawk. Um, and then the uh, business one is train to perform STL. And so I do a lot of Instagram posting, um, but I got everything, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, I'm trying to step my YouTube game up. But um, I'm wearing a lot of hats right now. Yeah, you, know the, you know the stereotype about Jamaicans? Uh-uh. Uh, there's a stereotype that Jamaicans have a lot of jobs. So I tell you when I'm Jamaican right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I think every business owner is Jamaican at some yeah. point. You yeah, know, from, right. cleaning, from cleaning the toilets to, to yeah. putting together the marketing plan. Yeah. <laughs> it all falls underneath that. All right, man. Well, all those links will be in the show notes. Just go to trainergym.net and click on this episode of the podcast and then you can find out where you can get in touch with uh, my man hawk wayne and uh, find more information about him train with him all that good stuff um uh, hawk man it's always a pleasure likewise brother yeah we, we we once things calm down and we don't have to wear face masks maybe we can go and grab some lunch yeah yeah that'd be good Real yeah cool. okay yeah. man all right i'll talk to you later thank you jim appreciate it all right bye